real message behind the bigger chop. We begin our commercial free coverage with Nataline Securities Global Fixed Income Head, Andy Brenner and Euro Pacific Chief Economist, Peter Schiff. Andy, give me your headline right now from all that we've heard on this pretty momentous day. This was a hawkish 50 basis point cut. If you look at what Paul said through the conference, he told you the economy's still good, so we knew that he was trying to let you know that he's not going to cut aggressively. And we think Paul had to make had to do a lot of horse trading with some of the newer and some of the hawkish Fed governors. And that's why the SEP or the dot plots is not as aggressive as we would think. We still think there's going to be at least another 75 basis point uh, amount of cuts between November and December. We called for 50. We were right. We called for 125 for the year. And we think we're going to be right. But of course, time will tell. So this was a hawkish 50 basis point cut. That's why 10 years got down to 362, 363. And as you just said, they're now 371. And the two years got down to 352. And now they're back to 364. This is not a great cut for the market, which is why your S&P and other equities keep flipping. To that end, can we put up the S&P? It is now in the negative, down one point. This is a moving target, folks. Peter Schiff, uh, there was one dissent. This was not unanimous. Uh, Michelle Bowman did say she thought it should be a 25 basis point cut. Do you see a mistake here? Well, I mean, any cut was going to be a mistake. I think the Fed caved into the pressure of market expectations and, and cut 50 when they probably were set to do 25 a week or two ago. Uh, but I think they changed their minds. Uh, but look, you know, the, the market is uh, uh, delivering a verdict here. Interest rates are rising. They're not falling. Long term interest rates are going up. And I think the Fed rate cut marks the low in long term Treasury yields and mortgage yields. So I think you're going to start to see rising interest rates as the Fed cuts rates. Whoa, 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 and so whoa, you're whoa. not going to get the benefit really? that you might assume. Well, let me, and let me... you're going to get uh, an increase in consumer prices. I just want to tell you, OK, before the cut, prime rate, this is the rate upon which auto loans and a lot of loans are built, had been at 8.5 percent. We are hearing breaking news. Truist has just cut its prime rate, Peter, to 8 percent. So they're coming down. Yeah, but th yeah, that's that's a short term. And, and of course, depending on what rate you get over prime, uh, rates are headed up. Credit card rates are going up. Uh, they're at record highs and they're going higher because defaults are rising. And the inflation is not dead and buried like Powell claims. It's about to come back for a whole new lease, lease on life. In fact, it never really got close to 2%. The Fed is playing around with, with numbers. And I think we're already in a recession. It's not about how strong the economy is. I mean, that was just all a bunch of talk because he's trying to talk up the economy because he's trying to help out uh, Harris and, and try to you know continue this uh, false narrative that we have a strong economy. We have a weak economy. The only thing that's strong is inflation and people are about to see how much wow. stronger it's about to get now that the Fed is yeah. throwing gasoline well, on the to fire. To your point, uh, the short-term Treasury yields are tanking. We just saw the three-month down about 10 basis points. Andy Brenner. Uh, in, in, in due respect for my dear friend, Mr. Schiff, I, I think he's got some good points in that I think the term premium of the long end of the Treasury market is going to go higher, but I do think rates are going to stay lower. We've just moved, you know, two, ten years were four and a half, and now they're, you know, they they were down to 355 or or something like that. I do think the Fed does not believe that we're in a recession. I don't believe we're in a recession. I don't believe we're going into a recession. I think inflation is tame, but I do not think that rates make sense to buy right here. Do you, uh, is anybody shocked, Peter? Are yeah. you shocked that Fed Chair Powell, who has been incredibly measured and very anxious about making sure he's brought inflation down, went with the crowd? Because again, most of them felt it should be a cut of 50 basis points. Some even felt it should be 75 basis points uh, because he has been very concerned that inflation, at least in certain pockets, remains sticky. 
Well, look, if Powell cared about inflation, he never would have cut interest rates to zero in the first place or left them there as long as he did. He wouldn't have done all this quantitative easing. Uh, inflation is the Fed's tool. That's the only tool they actually have in, 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 their, in their chest for uh, trying to artificially stimulate the economy. You know, if Powell said that the Fed's job is to support the economy. That's not the Fed's job. Unfortunately, that's what Powell thinks is his job. And he thinks the way you support the economy is by creating inflation. Well, the problem is he created way too much inflation. And now inflation is the problem. And now he's trying to solve that problem with more inflation. And, you know, Powell indicated that for a while he could keep doing quantitative tightening while they're cutting interest rates. Well, I think by Q1 of next year, the Fed is going to be back to quantitative easing because the rate cuts are not going to stop the recession and they're going to result in higher long-term interest rates. And then the Fed is going to try in a panic to reduce long-term interest rates by going back to quantitative easing. And that's just going to increase the pain because it's going to send the dollar through the floor, uh, gold and other commodity prices through the roof. And consumers are not only going to be dealing with a loss of jobs, uh, but much higher uh, uh, prices when they when they go to the supermarket or any place else that they try to spend their rapidly depreciating dollars. Peter, Andy, we are watching a market that's uh, still in decision mode about where to go and how to absorb this. Right now, the Dow is in record territory again. I'm 71 points. We're watching it all. Andy, Peter, thank you.